Today, we have a lot of details on upcoming Xbox Game Studios RPGs. But first up, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe and share. It really helps the channel out. Xbox Game Studios has grown a lot over the past few years, and they are hard at work on many different types of RPGs. Some announced, some yet to be announced. But the question was asked a while back when Xbox picked up Bethesda. What about Fallout? Now before we talk about Starfield, we have to talk about Fallout. The question has always been asked, what about Fallout New Vegas 2? Because before, it's always been a pipe dream and it's never been a reality. But now that everyone is under the same umbrella, we live in a world where that literally could happen. You see, Bethesda's been asked a lot over the past few years about Fallout New Vegas 2 and now that it's actually possible. There's been a few teasers now and there on tweets. However, Jeff Grubb has recently said that Microsoft and Obsidian are in the early stages of looking into it. Now these are just rumours. However, it makes sense. You have Bethesda hard at work on Starfield and then they're going to be making the Elder Scrolls games. So it's going to be a long time before we can get a brand new mainline Fallout game. So given that Obsidian has proven in the past that they can make multiple projects at the same time, some big games even with small teams, they could prove that they could be the custodians of the Fallout franchise going forward. So even though they are making new IP, grounded, and they are hard at work on things like Avowed, in the Outer Worlds 2, we could potentially see Fallout New Vegas 2 in the next few years. So as a fan of RPGs in general, it's an exciting time. It looks like Xbox is going to continue to make huge RPGs and I can't wait. So Starfield, the game is still aiming for a 2022 release on Xbox Series X, Xbox Series S and PC and also day one on Xbox Game Pass. So we've had new details on the game and it's ambitious. You see, Bethesda RPGs have always been about player choice. You make your own adventure through discovery and adventure. That's what makes Bethesda's RPGs some of the best in the world. And they're not gonna stop at that. It looks like Bethesda is gonna try and open up their own formula to new possibilities which is exciting because Bethesda's been making brilliant RPGs for decades and well let's hear from the man himself there's certain you know types of entertainment where you're just experiencing it you're taking in what the creator wants you to see and they, you know they draw that dotted line between this happens go here do this the more that we can put you in the situation where you're going to decide that's what makes video games the best form of entertainment that they are. The team over at Bethesda are wanting to recreate that sense of wonder when you first step out into the wasteland. The unknown, not knowing where you are or what you're going to do. But you're in this world filled with many different possibilities, quests, storylines and just an immersive world. And then you have a game like Elder Scrolls. You walk out into the main open world and again adventure and wonder awaits. But the truth is, Bethesda want to do more, and they can. This is a space varying sci-fi RPG, but it's based on realism as well. So you're not gonna have big Star Wars style space battles, but it's gonna lean more into the science aspect of sci-fi rather than the fiction. And this also goes into the faction quest as well. Factions have played a huge part of Fallout and Elder Scrolls for a long time. These are quest lines that introduce you to new areas, interesting characters, and cool game design. But Bethesda want to take that to a new level. Your interactions with characters over the past few decades with Bethesda games has pretty much been the same. You enter a dialogue option, click on it, and it just happens. But Bethesda sounds like they want to take this to the next generation. And it sounds like they're gonna make it more interactive. So think in Mass Effect 1 through 3, 
you make particular choices and then all of a sudden you have an action command and that will be either a positive or negative action that can be somewhat physical and i kind of like that direction but those who have needed to grow their conversation tree for a while now and it looks like they're going to do that now when it comes to bethesda rpgs making your character has always been a huge aspect and it sounds like todd howard wants to take the creation aspect of your character and choices and stats to a whole new level for a long time together and it's nice with starfield to go back to some things we didn't do the backgrounds the traits the defining your character all of those stats um, and I think there's so many games now that do those things that people are ready for something that, that does a lot of the things that, you know, older hardcore RPGs, some that we used to do, doing those again in, in a new way. Part of the fun of an RPG is starting out your character to suit your playstyle. And it sounds like Bethesda's not only looked at their own games to learn lessons on future RPG games, but look at other games in the industry as well because there's been a lot of RPGs since Skyrim and since Fallout 4. To me, it sounds like they've looked at games like The Witcher 3 and Mass Effect. So it really looks like Bethesda's going out there to not just make the biggest RPG to date, but the most immersive RPG to date. And it doesn't stop there. You see, Bethesda's built this game from the ground up as a next-gen title. It's coming to Xbox Series X, Xbox Series S, and PC. These consoles are very capable now. You have 4K, 120 frames options, ray tracing, the list goes on. So they needed new technology and a new engine. And the technology they're using in this game is actually really impressive. We've always allowed the player to, you know, to create really interesting, unique characters. This game, we've definitely severely leveled up. The tech is based on scanning of real world models, similar to the photogrammetry we do in our landscapes. We're kind of applying the same thing to our, to our people as well, because it's not just the appearance of your player and all that, but you know, we want all the personal interactions of NPCs, other characters in the game to be as impactful as possible. And for that, you have to believe these are real people. You're a real person, you right? So with photogrammetry, you can get some really impressive results. And as we've seen in the past, games can look borderline photorealistic using this technology. Now, during one of the recent Starfield videos by Bethesda, they showed about four seconds of what looked to be the robot that accompanies you inside your spaceship. And I believe that looked like it was in game, which was actually really impressive. So the direction of this game visually looks good and also the art style. It's got this very lived in approach, much like Star Wars as opposed to Star Trek. Now, I can't show what I'm about to talk about, but they're out there. There's been various leaked images online of Starfield from a third person perspective. Now this game will feature both first person and third person. Previous Elder Scrolls and Fallout games feature both. However, everyone knows that the player experience isn't exactly the best in third person mode in those games but every single leak is third person and everything i've read about this game makes me believe that they want in both player styles to be viable and honestly i think that's the right way to go especially when you have a sci-fi adventure like this now bethesda have shown off this particular watch a few times in various videos there's a watch in a case next to a patch now I think there's more to this image than people think. You see, when Fallout 4 released, they came out with the Pip-Boy edition. I have one myself, it's really cool. It even interacted with the game itself, with a mobile phone inside. Now, I believe that this watch plays a bigger part in the game, because why would it be there? You see, on the watch there's thermal indicators, and I believe this watch in the game will give you all your important information when you're visiting all these planets. Can you take your helmet off? Is it safe? Is it toxins in the air? Bethesda are probably going to do this as a collector's edition, like they did with Fallout. Now, this is going to be an ambitious game. Bethesda always have these moments in their games where you go out into the open world and you have this wow moment. 
Well, Todd Howard has said that this game has multiple moments like that. That's pretty exciting because those are some of the best parts of those games. The feeling of exploration and wonder. Now, this game is going to be really ambitious. It really is. And as a fan of sci-fi RPGs, this could be one of the best. This could be up there with Mass Effect in my opinion. And if you've been following me for a while, you know that means a lot. Now, this game comes out later this year on Xbox Series X, Xbox Series S and PC, Xbox Game Pass Day 1 and presumably xCloud devices. So that's a lot of different ways to get into the game. Now a lot of people have been wondering, what about gameplay? And that's a good question. You see, for Bethesda RPGs, this is how they do it. They launch the game later in the year and then they show gameplay offered the E3 prior. It's going to be the same this year. Every single piece of art and tweet they've put out this year and last year, they've made sure that people see November 2022. And I believe it will make its release date. And that's it for today's video. If you've enjoyed it, please hit like, share and subscribe. Hit that bell for notifications, you'll be notified for my next video. All Things Xbox Podcast returns on Tuesdays. Follow me on Twitter, the link will be in the description down below. We have a lot of games to cover this year and we're still getting started. Now, I've talked on Twitter and previous podcasts about all the issues with the tech and everything. It's all sorted. We're back to weekly content and weekly podcasts. So, if you want fair Xbox coverage, I've got you sorted. Back to weekly videos. That's a promise. I'm out. I hope everyone has a good day. Peace.